Now here I have 10 step drawing horses and ponies, draw over 50 horses and ponies in 10 easy steps. Now this is part of the 10 step drawing series by Search Press. There are currently 10 books and this is the most recently published book. The author has four other books in this series. She's got cats, dogs, people and everyday things. And so I think this is a series of books that's really useful. I've looked at quite a few of this type of book with the step-by-step -step diagrams and some of them I find are quite confusing. Some of them don't have any written information but I think this is the best of them because you've got very easy, clear to follow diagrams and you have written information to help you as well. So these books are aimed at people who are new to drawing, new to drawing a certain subject and really need some sort of guidance. So this book covers heads and features, horse and pony bodies and then it goes around the world from North and South America, from Europe and from Africa, Asia and Australia. So there's lots of variety, lots of different types of horses, lots of shapes and lots of colours. The introduction talks about tackling different shapes and it has some basic information on equipment, how to follow the steps, a little tip here on following the guidelines and then some very basic colouring information. Now Justine suggests that you use coloured pencils and you will find that coloured pencil is definitely going to be the easiest to start with. She does mention that watercolour is probably the easiest paint but I would suggest that you follow Justine's advice and you start off with some pencils. Then we have the heads and features. So we have eyes and ears, different views of the head. You'll see here how easy these steps are to follow and you've got this further written information. But I have to point out that this is quite tiny. So if you do have visual problems, I think you may possibly struggle with the written information. But for most people, that will be absolutely fine and not a problem. So we look at different profiles of the head. This is very lovely. I love all this information at the bottom here where it shows you the colours to use and how to add the colour. Now as you progress you will need a more advanced book on colouring techniques. We move on to horse and pony bodies. So this is very basic colouring information but it's plenty to get you started. So we've got front leg and hind leg and then we move on to the body profiles. So we've got several different body profiles here for you. And then we move on to North and South America. So it's really nice to see horses and ponies from all over the world. It makes this book a lot more interesting to have so much variety in it. I think as well it's a really nice size, it's not too big, it's perfect to just pop in your bag. You could take this to a friend's house if you're a young person and share the book. Now from Europe we move on to here. This is, I, I do really like books of this size when you're starting out. I find they're so useful just to pick up and to take anywhere with you. You can see so much variety and you can really see how everything takes shape here. You can see your progress through the different steps. I'll just flip through quite quickly on this bit. Oh, it doesn't want to open. <laughs> Lovely Dartmoor pony. So we've got all different types of horses and ponies from small horses and ponies to great big horses. Shet little Shetland pony. All the popular types of horse, a shy horse, the things you'd expect to see and ones that you probably didn't even know about. So then we move on to Africa, Asia and Australia. So I think this is a really, really helpful book. 
And there's something I think that's very special about this book as well, which I'll just flick through these last few pages. So something I think is really special about this book, and it's why I really wanted to talk about this book first. Now, it's very hard to get books on drawing unicorns. There are a few, a lot of them are out of print or they're very expensive and they're, they're at a more advanced level. But I think if you have someone in your family who's obsessed with horses, this is a brilliant book. It's also great for someone who is obsessed with unicorns because all you need to do is add a horn on the head. And now we all know, well, a lot of us, do believe that unicorns are real but obviously we know that they are imaginary so a horn can be any shape or colour so all you've got to do is add a horn on the horse's head use some pretty colours whatever colour you want because it is a bit of fantasy and this book would be so useful for anyone who wants to learn to draw unicorns so I think it's a multi-use book so this is why I decided I wanted to look at the most recent book first because I know lots of people love drawing horses and ponies and there's also a lot of people who really love drawing unicorns and as I've said it's sometimes very hard to get a book on drawing unicorns which is very basic and a lot of the books on unicorns tell you go and look at pictures of horses. So I think you have a multi-use book here. So if you've got someone in your family who wants to learn to draw horses and ponies or wants to learn to draw unicorns you just need a little bit of imagination to add the horn and the pretty colours. So I think this is a wonderful series. I have looked at a few of the books and I think this is the one I really like the best. I've been waiting for this book to come out and I just think of all of the easy step-by-step -step drawing books, I really like this series the best. 